All right, moving right along. Um, in the previous video, we talked about importing a program into Ghidra, importing uh, or telling Ghidra to import the libraries and how that process works. And we learned how to find our main function. We learned how to rename a function, that way we can navigate to it in the future. And uh, we are ready to start our deep dive into doing analysis. So as mentioned previously, this is our decompiled view. Um, this is our opcodes view and down here is our disassembled view. This is the instructions. Um, I think the, I guess the main thing here is just to be aware that you have a, another view um, outside of this that, that you can also use. Um, so for now, I'm just going to close this. These are the t two main views that I normally have open whenever I'm doing uh, reverse engineering. Um, usually the, the disassembled view and the decompiled view. Uh, the other one is I will sometimes put um, structures down here. Uh, we don't have any structures created now, but uh, in, in just a moment, we're going to create a structure and it's going to show up down here and I'll add that view here. That way you can see what that looks like. So in main, we have a number of functions that main calls here and we have no idea what these do just by looking at them here because again, this binary that we are currently doing analysis on has been stripped of the symbols um, so it's our job to not only try to figure out what this program does but figure out what each one of these functions does so it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle you know you you start off with the small things and at the end hopefully you have a uh, bigger picture of of actually what's happening um, so we're just going to start at the very beginning here. Um, we're going to dive down into this function. So we're going to double click on it. And we see that we have what Ghidra is calling DAT underscore and numbers. So, and it's setting that equal to, uh, in this case, a string, hello from struct. Uh, in this case, a byte. Um, two bytes and four bytes here. So if we double click this, then it takes us to the location in memory in which these variables are located. So what these are, if you see something like this, these are global variables. And in this case, um, it's kind of giving it away here um, that it's a structure but in this case since each one of these are right beside each other in memory then what we can do is set up a structure um, in order to better display this data uh, so the way that we do that is we're going to go over here to our data type manager. We're going to choose the name of the current uh, program that we are in. Hit new and structure. And it's going to bring up this view. Um, I'm going to drag this over here. And whenever you're dragging stuff around Ghidra, you can highlight or click on this uh, bar up here and if you have the boxes like I have now that's going to put it as a tab behind the other tabs that you have if you take it for instance down right here or up right here where you see the arrows that's going to put it in the same window however it's going to split the window and I believe you can do that for sideways view as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. 
um, especially if you have a large screen you can fit you know a couple of these different views on on the same screen um, that way you can have a lot of data if you're into that kind of thing uh, so the if we look at this in memory in global memory then we can see that this is a character pointer so what we do we have a couple of different fields here that we can fill out in this structure the first one um, is so we have 0468 0468 it's going to be a character pointer so we are going to char pointer the second one here is going to be a byte um, so we can choose by the way these are not editable or editable um, the length is not editable editable or the offset so the way that you um, create let me I hit an incorrect hotkey sorry the way that you create um, variables inside of this structure you can double click on it and type the type of variable or what I do a lot of times instead of you know having an int I will just choose the number of uh, you know a representation of four um, bytes in order to uh, get me the correct offset for anything below that um, so if you hit B that will cycle through byte word and D word so that's what I mean whenever I I will just choose you know something generic in this case if I wanted an int um, instead of double clicking and hitting int I would just you know hit B and it's kind of a shortcut because um, the, the length is kind of what really matters here so if I go back to byte um, and then I actually need to pad this because of the extra byte here and then here we have a word so we have two right there and then here we have four which is a D word so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and the way that I apply this is I'm just going to copy this name go here um, and I can right click and go to data choose type or I could just hit the hotkey T and paste that right in there that's going to give me a preview of what I uh, have called struct um, so this looks correct sometimes you'll have multiple things that are in different names what what Ghidra uses as namespaces or what Ghidra defines as namespaces that uh, are of the same type so I may have you know four types that are structs however the first byte instead of it or the first uh, offset instead of it being a character pointer it may be a integer for instance um, so I'm going to choose OK there as you can see it has called all of these a struct if I expand the view here um, then you can see that I have all of my offsets here any references made to those offsets are right here um, and we'll get in a little bit later about what the references mean um, and these are the it's, it's showing the the correct sizes for these offsets so I wanna rename this to be something a little more meaningful um, in this case I'm just gonna say global global struct for lack of a better term um, and I also want to assign a name to these as well. So here, 
going to say character pointer um, here I'm going to say byte uh, that's padding it's never I'm, I'm just gonna put that just for the sake of doing it now but if this was a real life scenario then I would put anything there because it's never going to be used uh, it's gonna be a word and that's D word if I hit save you can see over here in this view that it has updated the the names now from time to time we may create a structure that uh, instead of it we assigning a byte here we may assign something incorrectly so I'll show you what that looks like real quick so this is what that is going to look like um, so here it's telling us that at offset 4 uh, we have a D word and we'll put uh, well, uh, junk. We'll just do that for now. Save it. Um, at this junk variable that we've assigned in this global structure that happens to be at offset 4, then it's telling us using this uh, naming scheme that uh, we have too many bytes assigned. So in this case, offset 0 at offset 4 if that's not confusing enough only takes one byte and then offset 2 at offset 4 takes two bytes so if I clear this back out um, and again because we've done it previously we can uh, go back here and Sometimes you'll have to fix things like that, especially if it's um, you create a structure and then it's not really apparent how many how, how much space it's using whenever it's being assigned, and then if it's used later somewhere else and it's you know uh, assigning something maybe bigger than what you actually thought it was. Another scenario is if you have um, where you don't give the structure enough space. Uh, sometimes you will have uh, where this would be overrun so it would be like global struct uh, 0022110 dot character pointer um, plus one or something like that um, you, you'll see that sometimes and then that means you just need to add more space to your structure there you go. Um, in this scenario, it didn't. In this particular one, it didn't care about that because these were globals. Uh, we're also going to rename this instead of uh, having the address at the end to just global struct. There we go. All right. Um, we can now name this function as setup global struct. And then we can move on with our analysis. Um, the next video, so we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna cut, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna cut that video or this video off right here. The next video, um, we'll see how this global structure is used later on in the program.